Hey scholars, this video is to try and address a few of the comments I've seen and a few of the discussion posts. Also to show you an alternative way of doing some of the stoichiometry stuff, but to also point out and show you how it's, even though it's a different method or a different way of thinking about the process, it's really still equivalent to what we've discussed so far. And so let's just say that in this reaction, we've got some phosphoric acid, some calcium chloride, forming a calcium phosphate precipitate, and some HCl is left behind after this reaction. So let's just say that we've got 7.77 grams of H3PO4. And let's say that we wanted to know how many grams of calcium phosphate we could precipitate if all of that phosphoric acid reacts. So far with the mole map, so far with the mole map, our process would be to take our grams of phosphoric acid, divide by molar mass to get moles of phosphoric acid, then use the molar ratio from this reaction to get moles of calcium phosphate, then multiply by the molar mass of calcium phosphate to get the grams of calcium phosphate. So if I show that process here, my grams of phosphoric acid times one mole of phosphoric acid for every 98.00 grams of phosphoric acid times one mole of calcium phosphate for every two moles of phosphoric acid, finally times 310.18 grams of calcium phosphate for every one mole of calcium phosphate. And I didn't quite have the space over here to fill in the full, whole formula, so that's the squiggly line. So with that whole process, plugging that into the calculator, 7.77 times 310.18 divided by 98 and divided by two gives me 12.2964 grams of calcium phosphate which because the 7.77 only has three sig figs and I'm not limited by anything else actually becomes 12.3 grams. Now in this process, one thing I've seen people do, I actually didn't see anybody doing this until I was teaching college and it was about two years ago when I saw somebody solving problems this way. And one of the things they did was they took the number of moles of a compound and they multiplied the 98 grams per mole of phosphoric acid by two moles of phosphoric acid to get 196 grams of phosphoric acid. And they took the three moles of calcium chloride and multiplied that by the molar mass of the calcium chloride to get the same thing. This would be 332.94 grams of calcium chloride. And they would have done the same thing with the calcium phosphate, but that's just times one, so that's still just 310.18 grams of calcium phosphate. And I'm gonna skip the HCl. And what they would do with these is these amounts are then related for this one reaction. And you could take the 7.77 grams of H3PO4 and multiply by 310.18 
grams of calcium phosphate and divide by the 196.00 grams of phosphoric acid. And if you take a look at that process and you plug it into your calculator at 7.77 times 310.18 divided by 196.00, which still gives us our 12.3 grams of calcium phosphate we get the same answer. So this process could certainly work for us. The confusing part or the question about why it works for us is that what we've done is we've taken our grams per mole of calcium phosphate and we've multiplied by the coefficient from the equation. And we've taken our moles of phosphoric acid and multiplied by that molar mass. And notice that all of that is in the denominator of this whole process. And so really, by multiplying by the coefficients, whoever was doing it that way was really still doing the same thing we did here. They were just breaking it down into smaller steps. The most important thing, if you solve your problems this way though, is showing me how you got those numbers. So if you just write down 196 grams of phosphoric acid, I'm gonna not know, playing devil's advocate, where you got that from. What I'm looking for from you is I'm looking for the 98 grams per mole for one phosphoric acid, and I'm looking for you to break things down and do conversions this way with the mole map. Even though this process works and you could certainly use it, the hardest part is showing all of your steps when you find these larger masses for the reaction, okay? And um, it's only useful if you're going from grams to grams. If you're trying to go from grams to molecules, you don't really use this because you use Avogadro's number. Or later on, if we're going to solutions, you again don't really use this because we're using different conversions. We're not just using the molar masses. What I will say about this process that's kind of cool is you won't see all these numbers now because I'm trying to give us more space, but our 196 grams of phosphoric acid plus our 332.94 grams of calcium chloride happens to be equal to our 310.18 grams of calcium phosphate. Plus, I know I said I wasn't gonna do it before, but I went ahead and multiplied out the HCl, plus 218.76 grams of HCl. And within rounding errors, if we add up those masses from both sides, those come to 528.94 grams, just grams of reactants, and our 310.18 plus 218.76 comes to the same amount, 528.94 grams. We don't have any issues here with rounding. And what we're seeing here really is that when we consider all of those molar masses and all of those coefficients, what this is really proving is the conservation of mass. And notice that if we had balanced the reaction incorrectly, then we would not have equal masses on both sides. And so this is again, really one of those reasons why we always wanna balance the reactions uh, or check to make sure the reactions are balanced. So really the short story for this video is that there are multiple ways to solve these conversion questions. There are multiple ways to go from grams to grams. One of those ways involves multiplying each molar mass by the coefficient before you do any conversions. The only problem is that if this was all you showed me, you wouldn't be showing me how you got the 196 in this case. You wouldn't be showing me how you knew these two masses were proportional for the reaction. 
And so if you choose to do something like this, you do have to make sure that you show me all of your steps. Whereas if you follow the mole map, what that's doing is it's still doing all of the same math. We're just thinking about all of that math as though we're converting one thing at a time. So notice that when we go from grams to moles, our grams of phosphoric acid change, but we still have phosphoric acid. When we use the molar ratio, we change from moles of phosphoric acid to moles of calcium phosphate. So our units stayed the same. We still have moles, but we changed our label. We went from phosphoric acid to calcium phosphate. In the final conversion, we still have calcium phosphate, but we changed from moles to grams. So one of the things we're doing here with the way we're trying to show our work is that we're only changing one thing at a time. Ideally, this is what I would like to see from you, but again, it's not the only way for you to show your work. The important thing is that you show all of your work and that you show all of your steps. That's how you can prove to me that you understand what you're doing in the conversions, and that's how we can find mistakes if you happen to make a mistake in the process.